It's winter where I am, uh, in this place and in this time. Perhaps we can invoke a coyote, and it will be nourishing and not destructive. But who can say if those aren't the same thing? Coyote's third song of crushed quartz and almonds. Coyote says, hand me the bleached leash to the unsaid sounds in your mouth. Coyote says, your spiritual life should have been a towering jungle filled with bats and jaguars and 3,000-year-old trees. But fear has downsized that wilderness to a triangle of artificial turf and left you with nothing but a Gucci suitcase stuffed full of mystery novels and a few stale pretzels, bucko. Coyote says no feathered ghost or green-eyed spirit in the other world wants to hear how oppressively clean the cubicle was in which you spent weeks typing up the groans of deceit plaintiffs as a gray cloud searched all over town for your heart. Coyote saith, only those who have crucified their babbling on the iron tree of complete unknowing shall hear the mountain. Watched over by ravens, threaded by the fog-like tones of millions of yellow bells. Coyote says, I see dirt from an almond farm under the fingernails of a man in Los Angeles, writing his name on an application for a green card, while in Syria, a grandmother buries the nylon rope with which she once tied up the thirteen ragged, bone-white herons of her grief. Coyote says, in one of the numberless chains of amino acids drifting through your blood, I hear a dirge being played for the DNA's scorched orchard of unrealized and defeated forms. Coyote says the soil of language is rife with wisdoms, like forgotten gourds gone bumpy and butter-colored under summer's weight, and seven minutes after the birthday of the venerable bead, I will drag them out into the light, polish them with the tattered rag of my voice, and shake them until each one clatters like a hollow moon packed with the antlers of reindeer, who died under hissing stars after the wind carried the dusts of strontium-90 and plutonium-239 over the fence surrounding Chernobyl nobles melted fuel rods, and into the willow leaves they nibbled up into their bones. Coyote says anxiety is the mountain in the blood. You climb while sitting at a particle board desk, as your balding and unfindable boss signs you up for new kinds of hell, such as the Albuquerque Dream Seminar, focused on reducing cholesterol among district sales managers who will not eat lettuce. Coyote says sorrow is the water in which this boat of fits and splinters will soon be lost. Coyote says align your mind to the static you hear frothing between the radio stations of duty and desire whenever you finger your wedding ring pillaged from hills that didn't want to be jewelry didn't want to become expensive knickknacks charged with reminding homo sapiens of the room at the heart of love where the clay tablets of tenderness rest unbroken. Coyote says I could care less. Coyote says improvements have been made to the bruise. Grief has been made shinier. And the end notes to the mantra clanking inside your left upper tibia have been spell-checked by administrative assistants hiding sad tattoos under black jeans, someone stitched in a poorly ventilated factory located in the Mexican Maquiladora zone, which to most Americans is a region exactly corresponding with the unconscious. My fellow jerry cans, my fellow industrial mammals sheltering the beeswax candle of the mind, my fellow citizens of a small mountain village filled with apologists for the unkillable yes inside the Dow Jones average. Coyote says the basil in its pot gives out smells no plastic credit card could dream of, even if it were buried in the lost compost of Eden, serenaded by Kowali singers from Mozambique, and sprinkled daily with the tears of frogs, who after 250 million years of evolution were erased from this earth by a petroleum byproduct some pretzel-munching clothing engineer felt was needed to waterproof the jackets we bought and have yet to buy from L.L. Bean. If you have a hurt, hurt now. Coyote says, your ancestors have prepared a road for you like a hymn sung by a pumpkin seed. But still you testify to the cleverness of your smartphone ringtone as melons roll off the ship's deck into the ravenous sea. Anchored to earth by the fine print of the utility bill, shot into space by the sound of 3,000 coffins hitting the floor. Coyote says philosophers wearing granite bathrobes have gone to live in a prayer so old it has yet to be said, and there they will enact their revenge on every naysaying landlord in the city of Binghamton. 
Coyote says Jay Leeming ransoms the encyclopedia of worrisome engine noises for platinum potatoes slumbering in the earth's red throat. He is a mile without a map and a shoe burning unnecessarily in the heart of the sun and should be turned off like a faucet. Given a jar filled with dog hair and condemned to photocopy the auras of carboniferous cockroaches while wearing mucklucks stitched from the braggadocio of 13 congressmen and the velvet insomnia of a lichen-crusted gravestone. Bullet the language and hammer the voice. Coyote says I am tired of saying, but my fatigue is a horse that I will ride across ten continents of email, to reach a Quonset hut filled with dusty pinball machines, a Twitter with nine spotted ladybugs listening for the blue crackle of limestone, melting into magma 50 miles below the crocus-bordered trailer parks of Vardaman, Mississippi. Coyote says, my personal climate change is a deck of cards pickled in turpentine and bare fat, which I will deal out willy-nilly to Paleolithic ghosts, as floodwaters hurl dead pelicans and twisted vinyl siding through the windows of waffle iron factories abandoned to the sea, leaving children in wet sweatshirts with nowhere to go but the garbage dumps of El Salvador, where they, where they will learn magic. Into the vacuum, into the sweltering sun. Coyote says body is the beehive and thought the buzz. He says there is an angel of green silk and burlap chugging Budweiser and spray painting sticky hexagrams on the underside of your prayers, and you owe him $1,100.95, oh thimble-minded professor of smartphone studies, oh dumb-hungry dropout from the schoolroom of the cabbage, oh gadget-happy songster whose forgetfulness shall eat the earth. Coyote says the black man inside the white man is trading saffron-colored pyramids filled with slippery rhythms with the white man inside the black man who gives him a six-pack of coconut water, a swan-feathered tuxedo, and the deed to a thousand-room casino whittled from a star. They parted amicably. Coyote says the 300-pound Bible of my speech is a jade pin fallen from a king's cloak. It is a horse named Yellow Dancer who has been shot full of amphetamines. It is a cathedral peanut and a moon-pounded miracle. It is a cannonball full of Mesozoic laughter and a flag woven from the wind above the landfill. It is an aria smuggled into the nursing home by ancient and mud-loving moles, too busy dreaming the script for the next millennium to develop Eyes. It is a lie fueled by cactus nectar. It is old age echoing in the newborn child, and a rat suited man spray painting proverbs onto the zebras clustered nervously inside your mortgage. It is a ticket to the sticky floored cinema, cinema frequented by unwed taxi drivers and popcorn gobbling families of four. It is a cow from which all the uncrowned answers to your questions steal their milk. It is an ocean renting a carpeted room inside a raindrop. It is a spider's egg and a cold beer and a cardboard coffin. It is the dark thoughts of the clam. It is the oven in which the bakers, the bikers, bake their brownies. It is an encyclopedia of disaster and a mask made of willow bark and also a wet hat in the rain, but it just might be medicine for all the hope-slaughtering, ravenous, garbage-breath troubles of this earth.